What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Riddell. Today's video is really for you E4 players. Now we all know that the moment you play E4, your opponent has a ton of different chess opening systems that they can use against this move, including E5, the French perk, Scandi, Carl Kahn, Sicilian, the list goes on and on. But what if you play the move E4 and your opponent plays something that really annoys you, something that you don't like to go against? Well, against a ton of these moves, you can just transpose into the king's Indian attack. Let's say, for example, that you face the move of e6 with the French defense, and you just can't find an option against the French that you like. In fact, this is one of the most hated openings from e4 players. If you play the French defense, there's a lot of e4 players that simply don't like you. But here, if we don't want to go into the main line of the French defense, or we don't want to go into any kind of crazy sub variants of the French, we can simply play this move of d3 right? Transposing into the King's Indian attack. It's a little bit of a different move order. Usually with the King's Indian attack, we play knight f3, we look to Fianchetto our bishop, and then castle kingside, and then later on, look to expand in the center of the board. Here we're just switching up the order. If black does play a move like d5, putting pressure on our central pawn, okay, we'll play knight d2. And here, even if black takes on e4, we have d takes e4 ready to go. And notice how queen takes d1 is not possible because of our knight on d2. And here, after a move like bishop c5, there's a lot of different things that we can do. But if you're really trying to go for that king's Indian attack type setup, we can play knight gf3, simply fianchetto our bishop, and now castle kingside. And there you go. You're playing king's Indian attack. And your opponent probably wouldn't have went with the move of e6 followed by d5 if you started off with knight f3. But now you have your same exact setup and black probably doesn't have their favorite setup against it. So that covers the French defense. What about a move here like the Karl Kahn with c6? This is also an opening, including myself, that a lot of e4 players do not like to go against. Well, in this case, again, we can always just go right into the King's Indian attack. This is actually called the Breyer variation with d3, but we're going to get the same setup with knight d2. And here, even if black tries to take full control of the center of the board, we got nothing to worry about. Knight f3, Fianchetto that bishop, castle kingside, and you're playing a King's Indian attack instead of going into crazy Karl Kahn defense type theory. So we just covered two moves so far. What about a move like d6? Well, with the perk, I mean, this move d6 really doesn't put any pressure on our pawn on e4 and really doesn't plan to for quite a while. So against a move like the perk with d6, we can just continue with d3, knight d2, and the same exact setup. But what about the Sicilian defense? Does it work against the Sicilian? Well, yet again, okay, let's play d3. And we even have that option of changing up the move order with a move like g3. If we see something like d5, we could take the central pawn, but I personally prefer playing this move of knight d2 and then just continuing yet again with knight f3, castle and king side, rook e1. And again, you got that king's Indian attack setup starting off with the move e4. So y'all, I just covered a few different chess opening systems for black, which the e4 player can transpose into the king's Indian attack very easily. Now there's a couple moves here for black that I personally don't like playing the King's Indian attack, including e5 and the Scandinavian defense. Let's start off with the Scandinavian defense. Well, first off, I mean, with Black just putting all this pressure right away on our pawn on e4, we can't play this move of d3 because we got to be worried about d takes e4. And now after pawn takes, we no longer have this knight on d2. We didn't have enough time. And after queen takes d1, snatching off our queen, our king is not going to be able to castle, and Black's king is definitely a slight advantage for Black here, not to mention that it's their move. That's why I don't recommend playing d3 against the move d5 starting out. Also against this move of e5, now this is a lot less obvious, and this really depends on your style of play more than facing the Scandinavian defense, but I personally don't like trying to transpose into the king's Indian attack. Now, first off, this d3 move is actually really solid. It's really a reverse Philidor type system, but with an extra tempo. But here, if we do see a move like d5, we got to be a little bit careful. I think that most players would probably just want to take on d5, right? And then after that, just continue developing their pieces. Here, if we do see a move like knight d2, black is then able to play f5, right? Just putting a ton of pressure on our pawn on e4. And there are players that like this position for white and will continue now with a move like c3 or knight f3. I personally think that this is just too much pressure on our central pawn to play a comfortable game, but it's really up to you and your preference. So y'all, that really covers today's video. We're not going super in depth today, like usual going into opening theory, but I just wanted to mention that if you are an e4 player and you don't like playing against 
the French or the Carl Khan or a list of other openings, you can transpose into the King's Indian attack. If you'd like, on top of that, the King's Indian attack works very well against a move like knight f6. If you don't want to play a move like knight c3 and face the Scandinavian variation, and if you don't want to play this move e5 and really start overextending your pawns in the center, at least that's what it often feels like to me, you can simply respond with this move of d3. And it's also very good against the Owens defense. Most players with white continue with d4, but black now continues with bishop b7, and they're going to continue to put pressure on our central pawns and our knight on c3 if we ever develop it trying to defend that central pawn. I personally play the Owens defenses black all the time, but I hate playing against it. So whenever I do see this move of b6, I don't play d4. I instead just play d3 and make this pawn protected right out of the gate. From there, we can continue with knight d2, knight f3, and we're just playing chess. Guys, if you play this move of e4 and your opponent plays something like the Owens defense, the Carl Kahn, the French, etc., etc., and you then just continue with d3 and knight d2, trust me, you're going to take them out of your comfort zone and you're going to be more comfortable in those types of positions. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more on the theory behind the King's Indian attack, click that video to the left. If you'd like to learn more on how to play the check perk defense, click that video to the right. Leave a comment down below to let me know what other videos you'd like to see covered on this channel. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.